Good morning. It's great to be able to come together this morning, uh, particularly when it sort of looked like we almost wouldn't be able to do very much for a while, but, uh, but thankfully, thank God we have, uh, we're able to celebrate Easter, even if it is with masks. Just a little, uh, just a little reminder about that. It's great to see you all wearing your masks. Um, I'm sorry that I was not able to get a liturgically correct black mask. Uh, I was right last night, but this morning I'm not. But um, uh, we have to continue wearing those during the service while we're sitting in the, in the body of the, of the church. Even during songs, uh, you still need to, to wear those. Uh, it is possible to sing with them on. It just feels a bit funny, that's all. And it may fog up your glasses. Um, and what else? Continue the... Um, you know, the social distancing, all of that sort of stuff. We know sometimes these rules seem a little bit picky and finicky, um, but the way I look at it, it's a matter of protecting those... You know, I'm, I'm not so concerned about, you know, myself as to whether I catch it or not. You know, I know there's not a lot around, but I would just like to think that in my actions, I'm protecting those around me, that any older people or somebody who's maybe going through chemo or something like that and their, their immunity is suppressed a bit, uh, I want to protect those people. So that's, that's why I'm doing it. Um, and so if we, we keep that in mind, then we're doing it for others, not for ourselves. And it, it, uh, gets, it gets us in our right headspace and uh, easier to justify it to ourselves and a, a better attitude to go with, I think. Uh, so let's to continue to protect one another. Uh, I think we're doing a good job as far as uh, protecting each other in Australia. Uh, we're seeing very low rates, um, and so it's good to continue that and, and keep that going. Um, and unfortunately, we still can't shake hands um, So for the same reasons, uh, but we will one day. We will one day. We can still be loving brothers and sisters in Christ. Let's begin with the opening sentences. God forbid that I should boast of anything but the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ. In him is salvation, life and resurrection from the dead. By him we are redeemed and set free. May God be gracious to us and bless us and make his face shine upon us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We sing our first hymn, Come to Calvary's Holy Mountain. But in part and turn
Lord Jesus Christ, our great high priest, when you came into this world of sin, you were tested and tempted in all ways, yet you did not sin, but became sin for us. Heavenly Father, we admit and confess that we have not passed the test. We have sinned against you in our thoughts, in our words and in our actions. Have mercy on us, we pray, for the sake of our great high priest, Jesus Christ. The death of Christ was on your behalf. The death of Christ was on your behalf and at the command of God. I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why are you so far from helping me? O oh my God, I cry by day, but you do not answer, and by night, but find no rest. Do not be far from me, for trouble is near, and there is no one to help. The Lord be with you. Let us pray that we accept the cross of Christ. Almighty and merciful God, we thank you for bringing life and peace for us through the shame, suffering and death of your Son. Teach us to boast about nothing but the cross of Christ and be willing to suffer gladly for his sake. For he lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ have mercy, Christ have mercy, Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy. We have our first reading. By your holy cross you have redeemed the world. We're going to start again. So, The first reading is from Luke chapter 22 beginning at verse 39. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you. By your holy cross we have redeemed the world. Jesus went out as usual to the Mount of Olives and his disciples followed him. On reaching the place, he said to them, pray that you will not fall into temptation. He withdrew about a stone's throw beyond them, knelt down and prayed, Father, if you are willing, take this cup from me. Yet not my will, but yours be done. An angel from heaven appeared to him and strengthened him. And being in anguish, he prayed more earnestly, and his sweat was like drops of blood falling to the ground. When he rose from prayer and went back to his disciples, he found them asleep, exhausted from sorrow. Why are you sleeping? he asked them. Get up and pray that you will not fall into temptation. While he was still speaking, a crowd came up, and the man who was called Judas, one of the twelve, was leading them. He approached Jesus to kiss him, but Jesus asked him, Judas, are you betraying the Son of Man with a kiss? Then Jesus said to the chief priests, the officers and the temple guard and the elders who had come for him? Am I leading a rebellion that you have come with swords and clubs? Every day I was in the temple courts with you and you did not lay a hand on me, but this is your hour when darkness reigns. This is the word of the Lord. Let us pray. 
Almighty God, your Son willingly endured the agony and shame of the cross of our redemption. Give us courage to take up our cross and follow him, for he lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We sing verse 1 of our hymn. The second reading comes from John um, chapter 19, verse 1 to 6. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you. Then Pilate took Jesus and had him flogged. The soldiers twisted together a crown of thorns and put it on his head. They clothed him in a purple robe and went up to him and again and again saying, Hail, King of the Jews. And they slapped him in the face. Once more, Pilate came out and said to the Jews gathered there, Look, I am bringing him out to you to let you know that I find no basis for a charge against him. When Jesus came out wearing the crown of thorns and the purple robe, Pilate said to them, Here is the man. As soon as the chief priests and their officials saw him, they shouted, Crucify! Crucify! This is the word of the Lord. Let us pray. Almighty and eternal God, it is your will to restore all things to your beloved Son, whom you anointed priest forever and King of all creation. Grant that all the people of the earth now divided by the power of sin, may be united under the glorious and gentle rule of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we pray. Amen. The third reading is from John chapter 19, verses 14 to 17. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you. It was the day of preparation for, of the Passover. It was about noon. Here is your king, Pilate said to the Jews. They shouted, Take him away, take him away, crucify him. Shall I crucify your king? Pilate asked. We have no king but Caesar, the chief priests answered. Finally, Pilate handed him over to them to be crucified. So the soldiers took charge of Jesus. Carrying his own cross, he went out to the place of the skull which in Aramaic is called Golgotha. This is the word of the Lord. And we pray. 
Almighty God, your dear Son suffered pain before joy and was crucified before he received glory. Grant that the way of the cross may be for us the way of life and peace. We ask this through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. fourth reading comes from Mark chapter 15 verses 25 to 32. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you. On the holy cross you have redeemed the world. It was nine in the morning when they crucified him. The written notice of charge against him read, The King of the Jews. They crucified two rebels with him, one on his right and one on his left. Those who passed by hurled insults at him, shaking their heads and saying, So, you who are going to destroy the temple and build it in three days, come down from the cross and save yourself. In the same way, the chief priests and the teachers of the law mocked him amongst themselves. He saved others, they said, but he can't save himself. Let this Messiah, the King of Israel, come down now from the cross that we may see and believe. Those crucified with him also heaped insults on him. This is the word of the Lord. Let us pray. Merciful Father, our Lord Jesus Christ suffered shame for our sake. Give us grace to humble ourselves before him so that our sins may be laid bare and we may know your forgiveness. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. The fifth reading is from Luke chapter 23, verses 44 to 47. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you. Christ, you have redeemed the world. It was about noon, and darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon, for the sun stopped shining. And the curtain of the temple was torn in two. Jesus called out with a loud voice, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. When he said this, he breathed his last. The centurion, seeing what had happened, praised God and said, Surely this was a righteous man. This is the word of the Lord. Let us pray. O God, you gave your only Son, Jesus Christ, to suffer death on the cross for our redemption and to deliver us from the power of the enemy by his glorious resurrection. May we die to sin each day so that we may live forever with him who died and rose again for us, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.
The sixth reading comes from Matthew 27, verses 57 to 61. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you. By your holy cross, you have redeemed the world. As evening approached, there came a rich man from Arimathea named Joseph, who had himself become a disciple of Jesus. Going to Pilate, he asked for Jesus' body, and Pilate ordered ordered that it be given to him. Joseph took the body, wrapped it in a clean linen cloth, and placed it in his own new tomb that he had cut out of the rock. He rolled a big stone in front of the entrance to the tomb and went away. Mary Magdalene and the other Mary were sitting there opposite the tomb. This is the word of the Lord. And we pray. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, you rested in the tomb on the Sabbath day and so sanctified the grave to be a bed of hope for your people. Lead us to sorrow for our sins, which were the cause of your suffering and death, and grant that when our bodies lie in the dust, we may live with you. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen.
before the message, we've, uh, we've got a kids address for any um, little people who'd like to uh, come forward now. So any young ones, please come forward and have a little kids address here for you. Yeah, one. Any young ones want to join in? Come down the front. Oh yes, you need one of those. Good morning. Um, so, um, Good Friday is good because of what Jesus did for us. And the reading we've got here is from Matthew fourteen twenty seven. But Jesus quickly spoke to them, Have courage, it is I, do not be afraid. Why aren't we at church when it's Friday? Today is the day when Christians all over the world remember when Jesus died on the cross, three days before Easter Sunday. Have you noticed that the church looks bare up by the altar? In the, last, in the service last night on Maundy Thursday, all the decorations were taken out to show that Jesus was stripped of his power and glory as he went to his death. Our mood is sad and thoughtful as we think about these things. So why do we call it Good Friday? What happened to Jesus certainly wasn't good, but the results for us are good, very, very good. Because all the sin went away, well, not all the sin, but most of the sin went away because Jesus died for us. Before we do it, um, that when he died, everyone realised that he was the top, the real son of God. Very good. We know the end of the cross story, that Jesus didn't stay dead but came alive again a few days later. Jesus died and rose for us so that things are put right between us and God. And one day we will live with him forever in heaven. On Good Friday, it is good for us to think about Jesus dying on the cross. Many Christians spend the day quietly and slowly, perhaps eating very little and listening to special music or enjoying silence. You want to pray now, boys? You want to pray? And pray, put your hands together and pray. Pray to Jesus. Dear Jesus, thank you for loving us so much that you were willing to die for us. Thank you for dying on the cross so we can live with you forever in heaven. Help us to remember all the wonderful things you have done for us. Amen. There we go. Thanks, Beck. Just about don't need to say anything now, do you? It's that simple. It's that simple. Jesus died for the sin of all of us. And uh, just like just like any story, though, 
there's an ending to the story and uh, we come here on Good Friday knowing what comes next. We look forward to what comes next, we know that. But it's good to, stop, to pause for a moment. I thought that might have been me. But it's good to pause for a moment and think about what we're doing here, Good Friday. Uh, what happened on Friday. It's good to think about that and just to focus on that. Spend the day focusing on that. Yes, we know what's coming Sunday. The good news is there. But let's focus on, on Friday. We are here because of our sin. We are, we're at this place because we rebelled from God. It was necessary for Jesus to die because of our separation from God. Now, that's, that's, our separation from God is bad news. If we have no relationship with God, if we're, if we're not connected with God, if God is not our Father, then our prospects for the future don't look good. This is important stuff because after we live this life, the future continues and it's essential that we know where we're going afterwards, after our death. We know that after death comes something. The Bible tells us it's either heaven or hell. Hell is a bad place. Heaven is the good place. We want to go to the good place. It's, all that, it's that simple. We want to go to heaven when we die. The problem is we can't go to heaven when we die because of our sin. If we want to put that in, in everyday terms, it's because of our rebellion against God. It's because of our uh, own direction. It's because we want to be masters of our own universe. It's because we want to be number one. We want to be our own gods. Or we want to follow some other god or we want to follow some other way. But basically it's you could sum it up by our rebellion against God. God wants us to go this way, we want to go that way. Our natural bent is to go our own way. Now we know that the, the uh, Genesis story tells us that it's all Adam's fault, that he you know, had the original sin and because of that original sin then we're all tainted with sin and so we can say, well, how, how fair is that? You know, why should I have to pay the penalty for Adam's sin? You know, why should I be destined for hell because somebody thousands of years ago went the wrong way and now I'm following that? Well, if I think the way to think about that is think about your own direction, that your own actions, the things that you do. You know, would you rather look after yourself than somebody else? That's called selfishness. That's against God's way. There you go. You're sunk straight away. Uh, you know, do you find yourself um, organising your own future rather than seeing what God... Is that the first place you go? Do you say, God, what is my future? What would you like me to do uh, for my future, for my next step? You know, what would you like me to do in this situation? If that's not your first port of call, then already we're going our own way. We're choosing our own direction first. We don't have to look too far to find rebellion in our own lives. We don't have to look very far at all to see that we're heading our own way rather than God's. And so we need a saviour. We don't have to think very long to see the need for a saviour in our lives. See, God wants to be number one in our lives. But God wants something else too. God wants a relationship with us. God wants to be connected with each one of us. God, he... He engineered us in the first place. He made us. He created us. He put us on this earth. And so you are an individual loved creation of God. You are somebody that God has placed on this earth for a purpose and he loves you. Like a father loves their newborn child. Like a mother nursing their, their fresh new 
lovely smelling baby in her arms. That's how God feels about you. And so it breaks God's heart to know that you may not be with him forever. God would do anything to bring you back to him. And he's proven that by the cross. When we look at the cross, when we look at this whopping great statue here behind me, when we see that, that man dying on the cross, or when we imagine it, or we see a nice song like that one just before, when we imagine that, that depicts for us the depth of God's love for you and just what he's willing to do to bring you back to him. See, for, for sin to be out of the way, that's what it needs for sin, for rebellion, for our own direction to be out of the way between us and God. There's, a, there's an offence, there's... We've got it wrong between us and God. You know when there's an offence between friends? You know when, when one friend betrays another? There's a, a rift is caused. The trust is broken. Uh, and there's a coldness there. There's a distance. And, and good friends want that to be overcome. There is that between us and God because of our sin, because we've offended God, because we've gone against God. There's this rift, there's this coldness, there's this distance between us and God and God would do anything to overcome that distance. He overcomes that distance by paying the penalty of that offence. The only problem, that penalty is your death. We need to pay life for life. We need to pay... It, it costs us our death to overcome our rebellion and our sin. And God says, I, I can't cope with that. I don't want that. God loves you so much that he wanted to overcome that without you being destroyed. And so he offers his own son. You know, this is mind-blowing stuff. God offers his own son for you so that you can be restored to him. God gives his own son, Jesus Christ, to die. And so when Jesus died, Good Friday indeed, when Jesus died, when Jesus breathed his last, every penalty, every sin was paid for, every, every bad thing was overcome, every act of rebellion was, was overcome and gone. The slate is wiped clean for you because of Jesus' death on the cross. You no longer have this distance between you and God. It's that connection with God, that, that relationship with God, that bridge to heaven is yours if you just reach out and grab it. If you just hold out your hand and say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you for that. If you, if you open your heart and accept and say, yes, what a wonderful thing you did for me. Thank you. And that's the definition of faith. If you want one, in a nutshell, we're talking about nice little neat packages today, theology in a nutshell. If you want to know what faith is, faith says thank you. Thank you, Jesus, for what you've done. Thank you, God, for this new life. Now, here's one important thing that I want you to walk away with today. Jesus has pay the penalty for your sin. It no longer belongs to you. You can let it go. Don't stay there. Jesus has paid what it needs for you to have a new life, a new life with God. That's what he's paid for. Receive it. It's yours. You don't need that worry. You don't need that, that concern as to whether you're going to get through the day. You don't need that, that, uh, um, that 
you know, that anxiety that we go through about our own way and our own life. Jesus has paid for that. It's not yours anymore. Cast all your anxiety on him for he cares about you. This is where we live now. God has a new life for you. He's paid for it. It's yours. You can take it. You can live there. So let go of let go of anxiety, let go of worry. Let go of the despair that comes from not knowing who you are and where you belong. Let go of fear. Above all, let go of fear of death because death has no dominion over you anymore. You have new life and that lasts forever. So today as you consider, yes, consider your sin, consider the death of Jesus. But remember that this death has paid the penalty for your sin and it doesn't belong to you. It's not yours anymore. It's taken away from you. You are free. Peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus now and always. Live free. Amen. We're going to sing our next song now. Now this may be a little bit of a new one to some of you. It's, an, it's not a new song. It's an old song. It's a few hundred years old. Uh, but somehow it just hasn't found its way into the Lutheran tradition. Uh, it's a song called Here is Love. Uh, so enjoy. On this most sacred day when our Lord who has been lifted up to draw all people to himself has gone before us to the Father. We, his body, stand with him before the Father and intercede for his church and the world.
Let us pray for the Holy Church of God throughout the world, that God, the Almighty Father, will grant peace to his church, preserve it in unity and protect it throughout the world. Almighty Father, you have shown your glory to all nations in Christ your Son. Guide the work of your church, help it to persevere in faith, proclaim your name and bring your salvation to people everywhere. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let us pray for the bishop of our church, John, and our district bishop, Paul, for all pastors and servants of the church, and for all the people of God. Almighty Father, you guide the church and keep it holy. Help all of us to work faithfully for you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let us pray for those who are searching for faith in God or being prepared for baptism, that God will wash them in the waters of new birth and give them his Holy Spirit. Almighty Father, you continually add new members to your church. Increase the faith and understanding of those being prepared for baptism. Give them new birth by water and the Spirit and strengthen them by your grace to eternal life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let us pray for all Christians that God will gather us by his Spirit and keep us united in faith and love. Almighty Father, you have made us your holy people by our common baptism. Make us one in our confession of faith. Increase our love for each other and help us to work together in your mission to the people of the world. Lord, in your mercy, Amen. hear our prayer. Let us pray for the Jewish people to whom God spoke through the prophets, that they will acknowledge Jesus as the Christ foretold to them by the prophets. Almighty Father, long ago you gave your promise to Abraham and his descendants. Grant that your chosen people may share with us the fullness of your redemption. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let us pray for all who do not yet believe in Jesus Christ, that the light of the Holy Spirit will show them the way of salvation. Heavenly Father, remember those who do not remember you. Have mercy on those who have rejected your grace. Guide those who seek to make sense of their lives so that they may find their salvation in Jesus Christ. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let us pray for those who serve us in public office, that God may use them to curb what is evil and work for the well-being of our nation. Heavenly Father, guide all the nations of the earth so that they may promote international justice and peace Bless our country and all who hold positions of responsibility. Our Prime Minister Scott and Premier Anastasia, direct the Parliament of our Commonwealth and State so that we may enjoy good government and live together in freedom and harmony. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let us pray for all the needy people of the earth that God will provide for them according to their needs. Heavenly Father, Heal those who are physically sick and mentally disturbed. Support those who are aged and dying. Comfort those who are hungry and lonely. Relieve those who are oppressed and free those who are unjustly imprisoned. Finally, let us pray for all those things which our Lord would have us ask, saying, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We sing our final song, Lift High the Cross.
Now the God of peace and love be with you. In Jesus' name, Amen. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you. By your holy cross you have redeemed the world. As we leave, I'll, I'll just say one thing. We'll, uh, tomorrow we have, uh, remember from 6 o'clock, we have the, uh, the ecumenical prayer time. So we're, um, we're having a prayer for our community. So if you'd like to come down at that time and, uh, and join in praying, we've invited other churches as well. So there may be uh, a stack of people, maybe some you know and some you don't know, which is always great. Uh, as we gather together to pray for our community. Um, also, if you want to come and perhaps see if the organ will melt, uh, come Sunday morning because we're having those good old Easter hymns. There's nothing like an Easter hymn to give the organ a blast. And, uh, and so... We want to see if those pipes are going to melt on Sunday morning. So uh, come along for that, for that Easter, the resurrection celebration. And uh, we should leave in silence so I shan't say any more. Sorry? What time? Tomorrow, tomorrow night, six o'clock. You're talking too quietly. I need you to... On Sunday. Yes. Sunday. Yes. <laughs> Look, if you... Um, Sunday is 8 a.m. for uh, some good blasting Easter hymns. And yes, that's true. I should have said that, shouldn't I? And of course, 10.30 um, for the new service, which will also be uh, raising the roof um, in an entirely different way. Uh, so come along to those. Look, if that's not early enough for you, you can join us in Mount Sylvia at 6.30.